Hare Krishna everyone. So this is another lecture of your quantum mechanics series. Okay. So today we will start from our device concept of matter waves. Okay. So let's start with our today's lecture. Device device concept of matter waves. Concept of matter waves. Okay. So we are going to start with this. So what did De Broglie says about your wave, pack, wave particle duality? We also name it as your wave particle duality. So he says each material particle, each material particle each material particle of momentum of momentum p vector behaves behaves as a group of as a group of waves that is your matter waves matter waves okay so this is how he expressed your matter waves and from De Broglie's concept, we got lambda is equal to your h upon p, or I can write it as your h upon mv, as p is equal to your mv, and your wave vector that is k vector is equal to your 2 pi upon lambda. This is an important relation, you have to memorize it, and it will be equal to your p vector cross divided by, by h vector, h cross. Okay. So, some important points about De Broglie's concept. Number one is your matter at very small length scale behaves like waves. Matter at very small length scale, small length scale behaves as a wave. Okay. And electron diffraction, electron diffraction from crystals, from crystals confirms, in crystals confirms wave nature of electrons. These are the two outcomes we get from your De Broglie's concept wave nature of electrons. Okay. I have a question for you. Let's see if you can do this or not. Okay. The question says calculate the wavelengths, calculate the wavelengths associated with. associated with a cricket ball a cricket ball of mass of mass 0 0.221 kg moving with moving with speed of speed of 30 meter per second okay let's do this question Let's solve it. Okay. The question asks you that you have to calculate the wavelength. Okay. In order to calculate the wavelength, you have to find out the momentum. So momentum, we have formula P is equal to your MD. So put the values 0 0.221 into 30. So it will become your 6.63 kg for kg into meter per second. Okay. This is your momentum so lambda wavelength is equal to h upon p you know the value of h is your 6.63 into 10 to the power minus 34 upon 6.63 so it will become your 10 to the power minus 34 meter this is your expression for lambda so de Broglie just gave his concept about your mat wave but the experimental proof for every theoretical reasons we need the experimental proof okay 
so later on division german the two german scientist okay they came up with idea to experimentally verify the de broglie concept so let us talk about the experimental confirmation of matter waves okay experimental mental confirmation confirmation okay that is also known as your debichen german experiment a famous experiment debichen german experiment okay let us talk about the so basically the study is diffraction of beam of electrons from the surface of nickel crystal they used the nickel crystal they used the nickel crystal here this one is your nickel crystal and what did they do they used a beam of electrons okay the electron beam this is the source electron source and this angle is your i okay and the electron gets scattered by this this one and here is the detector okay detector this angle is also equal to phi and this angle is your theta So let us talk about this experiment. Okay, they used the nickel crystal. Okay, so the potential difference. The some experimental data you have to know that is experimental data. Okay, so first one, the potential difference they said is your potential difference value is equal to your fifty four volts. Fifty four. Volts, and then the kinetic energy of electron, electron, fifty-four electron volt. Okay. And next, the intensity was minimum. They found out the intensity was minimum as theta is equal to to thirty-five degree. And lambda is equal to our h upon p. So putting the values h upon, we know p. We can write it as 2 m e root over. So it will become your h upon 2 m e is the energy, and it is in the form of electron volt. So I can write it like this. And putting the values, you can get the value as 1 by 150 upon b root over Armstrong. The unit is in the form of Armstrong. so if we calculate the lambda electron the wavelength of electron so you can get the value 0.167 nanometer remember this remember this well sometimes questions are direct if you don't remember it you can calculate also okay, by putting the values so let's move further and talk about our bracks condition i will just give some um, basic uh, introduction okay bracks condition so basically in order to study the crystal structure we consider the bracks formula okay so for constructive for constructive interference constructive interference we have the formula that is 2d sin theta is your n lambda okay so if i will have take a example of this i can calculate the values as electron diffraction diffraction from crystal okay let us consider this one crystal okay by using bracks condition we need to calculate 
So for nickel, for nickel we have D that is interplanar distance is equal to your 0 0.215 nanometer. Okay. And the first order, first order for first order we have n is equal to 1. So Bragg's condition is your 2D sine theta is equal to your n lambda. So putting the values I can get 2 into 0 0.215 into sine theta is equal to 1 into lambda okay isn't it yes in place of lambda here above i have calculated lambda is as your 0 0.17 was 167 okay so i can put the values that is sine theta will be equal to your lambda is your 0 0.167 167 upon 2 multiplied up by 0 0.215 okay so it gives you the value as 0 0.39 okay so the scattering angle the scattering angle uh, so first calculate the theta theta is how much sin inverse sin inverse 0 0.39 if you calculate the value you can get the approximate value as your 25 degree 25 degree so i got the theta is as your 25 degree so what is the value of scattering angle scattering scattering angle or phi is equal to your 2 theta you know phi is equal to your 2 theta that is your 2 into 25 degree or 50 degree okay you got the scattering angle as this okay clear yes i hope it is clear to you now moving further we will see the wave particle duality that is complementary okay wave particle duality let me talk about this in brief i'll talk about this. wave particle particle these are the small concept you need to know okay complementarity we also called it complete mentality okay so what does it says it says it says particle and waves are equally important for a complete description of quantum system okay it says particle and wave are equally equally important for a complete for a complete description of description of quantum system okay this is your complementary principle okay so let's talk about further and we will move into your phase velocity and Group velocity. Okay. What does this explain? That is your phase velocity. And the second one is your group velocity. Group velocity. A very, very important concept. Okay. You need to know. So, phase velocity, we represented it as vp that is your omega upon k or e upon p i can write and omega upon q or e upon p okay and group velocity that is vg or your you can write simply v is that is velocity of wave that is your group velocity is equal to your d omega upon dk or i can write it as d up by dk of your uh, d by dk of uh, d by dk sorry you can write it as d omega dt d upon d that is h cut omega in place of omega you just multiply by h cut okay so you can get vg as your d omega upon dk is equal to your de upon dq okay this is the relation 
so important points let me discuss some of the important points that is you know phase velocity has no significance phase velocity as i discussed earlier that we know the group velocity is the real velocity of your wave okay phase velocity has no physical significance as no physical significance okay so let me talk about for both the cases that is your relativistic case and non relativistic case relativistic case for non relativistic case so for relativistic case i have that is vp is equal to your e upon p is equal to i can write for relativistic case that is gamma m not c square and p gamma m not v as i am talking about the relativistic case so gamma introduced so vp is equal to your c upon v into c so vp is greater than c isn't it yes okay and here your e is equal to i know p square upon 2m not so e upon p is equal to your p upon 2m not isn't it so i can write as p upon m not as your vg upon 2 so vp so vg sorry vg is is equal to your 2 vp isn't it yes and you know one more important relation that is multiplication of vp into vg is equal to your c square okay you need to know this okay and from these we get the contradictory result this one is the contradictory result this one is the contradictory result this one is the contradictory result contradictory result okay so let us talk about some of the few important points that is your group velocity gives the interpretation of the particle velocity group velocity gives the interpretation of particle velocity okay that is your particle motion is equivalent to your groove of waves okay and some of the few important relations you need to know that is relation between group velocity and phase velocity okay Vg is equal to your d omega upon d k is equal to your d upon d k omega is your k v p okay where k is where k is your two pi upon lambda okay and Vg is equal to your v p plus k d v p upon d k. Vg is equal to Vp minus lambda d Vp upon d lambda. Jehetu, jehetu. इतने मुझे लिखी दो उच्च सब cos कौन कौन apply करेगी तो मैं ये टा पाई लो. Dk is equal to तमर के तहे जो minus two pi by lambda square and here d lambda. So you get omega is equal to k Vp. So I can write it as Vz is equal to Vp plus P d Vp upon dp. How can I write this? Because Vp is equal to your omega upon k. That's why I write omega is equal to your k Vp, and I can also write it as P as P as P 
जेतु P is equal to your H cut K, so DP will be equal to your H cut DK. Okay. And for non-dispersive medium, non-dispersive medium, for non-dispersive medium, we have we have phase velocity is independent of wavelength. Phase velocity is independent of wavelength. Okay. Okay. And I can also write it as dvp upon d lambda will be equal to zero as phase velocity is independent upon uh, wavelength. Okay independent of wavelength so i can write it as this all waves have same velocity so all waves have same velocity okay for non-dispersive medium only okay so let us talk about the dispersive medium so what is there in dispersive medium dispersive medium okay when I talk about dispersive medium, then I have two things you need to talk about. That is your normal dispersion and is your, and is your anomalous dispersion. So for normal dispersion, normal dispersive medium, normal dispersive and one is your anomalous dispersive. So for normal dispersive, we have dvp upon d lambda is positive okay and here if lambda increases lambda increases that implies vp is increases okay and vg is your less than vp remember this one vg for normal dispersion your vg is less than vp that is group velocity is less than your phase velocity Okay, for anomalous dispersion, what happens? Your dvp upon d lambda value is your negative. So, dn upon d lambda is your positive. That implies vg is greater than vp. So, here I can say that if lambda increases, that implies your vp decreases, isn't it? Yes. So, remember for anomalous dispersion, your VG is greater than VP. Okay. So this is all about your dispersive medium, group velocity, phase velocity, and de Broglie's concept and experimental verification of your de Broglie's concept. That is your uh, Davison German experiment where they used the nickel crystal. Okay. And they used the diffraction concept there. Okay. So thank you for watching the video. Okay. If you like the lecture, then like, share, and subscribe. Okay and comment down your uh, thoughts and your doubts in the comment box okay so thank you